Welcome back to GB Guns, the Grand Power P45L Big Boy. Shooting impressions review. You'll see our absolute first shot cold impressions. We'll test full magazine plus one. Our trademark what's for dinner test to see what it eats. We'll take it over to the spinner for sights and trigger control. Do some practical accuracy and then give you the impressions from two different shooters. Coming up next on GB Guns. Cold shots. <laughs> did you get an auto forward? I did. We've got a reduced size torso out there about 20 yards away. I'm just ready to shoot. a different noise on the steel. Yeah, it is. And much smokier. Um, I haven't shot a lot of 45 in a long time, and it's going to be a good review, but I, I'm noticing some wrist shock already. It was looking pretty flat in your hands, though. Yeah, okay, good. P45L has been... Uh, well, Greatly, greatly requested by you guys for many years. It's shot grand powers in 22 and 380 and 9 mil and 10 mil. Never shot one in 45. See how this feels. Getting a little bit of glare from the sun being at that weird winter angle that we get. But wow, that is a... Well, and the direction of the air is blowing the Yeah, it's getting all, all the smoke back in our face. But that is that is really smooth. My first handgun was a 1911 in 45, and that's kind of what I learned on and cut my teeth on. It was nothing like this. That's very easy to shoot. 10 round magazines. Next up, we'll see how it runs fully stuffed. Using PMC Bronze 230 grain, MO for all this stuff. There go. And full ambi controls, as you saw on the tabletop, that all grand power, all grand power firearms that I've ever handled have. All their pistols and street bogs, etc. 11 rounds. I'm going to try to just burn through at that piece of steel with <laughs> the sun in my eyes and the smoke coming back into my face. I might miss more than normal, but uh, we're just looking to see how the gun runs using standard ammunition and a fully stuffed mag. perfectly and smells wonderful. Next, we'll see what it eats. It's that time again, thanks to our Ammo Squared True Shot Gun Club and Patreon supporters, we've got the what's for dinner test. What we're looking for is to see what the gun will and won't eat. So we're gonna fire three rounds of each of these. And as it roll by, you'll see we've got quite a variety of weight, projectile types, and case materials. We're looking to see, will it feed from slide lock? Is there enough energy to cycle and feed another round of the same type? interesting shape on that black hills then will it lock open on empty we've got from our lightest today is 78 grains which is nothing for two for 45 and then of course quite a few of your conventional 230 grains let's see what it eats our first course for what's for dinner is liberty ammunition civil defense this is a 78 grain it's been a long time since i shot 45 the size of the rounds is I don't know. <laughs> Huge. <laughs> Huge. Ooh. You can definitely see daylight. <laughs> Those have a percussion. Yeah. Come on, camera. There we go. Wow. Are there two? And for circle number two, we have ARX Inceptor. These are 118 grain. These are the polymer screwdriver tip looking things. Yeah, they're, they're, you have to go back and look at them. They're pretty interesting looking. I'm not even sure they're made anymore. 
There's a lot of old stuff in our tent, in our 45 What's for Dinner kit. I'm trying to figure out why the target is steaming. I guess it's warming up. Yeah, moisture off the back. Okay, I didn't see that first shot. I'm glad it's glad it's in there. <laughs> <laughs> for circle number three, read along with me. Alchemist Ammunition C3, which is compressed copper cartridge. Graham, what grain? Oh, these are 155 grain. These are so heavy. <laughs> like that whole box is heavy. Wait till you get the 230 grains. <laughs> 45 is obviously not a what's for dinner kit I have memorized. No, it's been a long time since we've shot 45 on this channel. They're pleasant to shoot. Any uh, smelling notes? No, they smell old. They shot off. Yeah, I'm glad that they're, it's that and not me. And for circle number four, Graham would say that we have Steinl, <laughs> 185 grain. I appreciate that smaller box. They're very handsome looking rounds. Yeah, these are nickel plated cases, uh, hollow points. That front sight has got me a little off today. There you go. Those had some authority. Yes, and uh, that grand power trigger on point as always. <laughs> Does that mean it was a surprise? <laughs> well, it is faster than I anticipated. From Black Hills Ammunition, we have a 200 grain semi wad cutter. They're, They're kind of cool looking. They are. It looks like a little hat. hat. <laughs> They're not attractive, but apparently they're perfectly effective for something. It's smoky. Yeah, they are. They smell like melted crayons. <laughs> <laughs> oh, solid lead projectiles like that often have a wax coating, and I think that's what we're smelling. Interesting. <laughs> Circle number six is a classic to Hornady Critical Defense 185 grain FTX bullet with a nickel plated case. Nickel plating helps uh, with corrosion resistance uh, as well as reducing friction inside the magazine and inside the chamber for better feeding and extracting. That's ah, got some recoil to it. Ooh. Circle number seven is from Arms Corps, 230 grain jacketed hollow point. Uh, these are classic brass affordable hollow point option. Love that. Looks like they did not cheap out on the powder. Whew. Very nicely. Yeah, they did. Come on. There you go. Circle number eight is a throwback that's gonna make you guys cry a little bit. It has a price tag on it from Big Five for $17.99 for a box of 45. Can you believe that? Anyways, this is Blazer aluminum cased ammunition. We use aluminum and steel cased ammunition in these tests because aluminum and steel are available. They're cheaper than brass, but they expand and contract at a different rate than brass does. So sometimes cause feeding issues in guns. However, they are generally less expensive than brass and that's why they are out there. So we're going to put that on a t-shirt and you guys can wear that while you're watching. <laughs> and, uh, Much softer shooting. Oh, the ejection. Oh, the first one just bit out. <laughs> it's because it was having such a good time, it didn't want to leave the gun. Come on. Attempting what was suggested that we tap and then zoom, um, it didn't work. Thanks for the suggestion, though. <laughs> for circle number nine, we've got a 
Tulemo, the tool ammo steel case, 230 grain ammunition, Russian made, probably not imported anymore. Oh, very soft. Getting hints of mustard. Circle 10 is Remington's ultimate defense full-size handgun, which is good because this is a pretty darn big gun. 230 grain. This is the Golden Saber BJHP nickel-plated case, brass jacketed hollow point. And if you're wondering, yes, that birthday bond auto sl forwarding slide is fun and makes you feel authoritative. Speaking of, uh, this Remington Ultimate Defense did have a little bit higher recoil. No cycling issues at all with the gun. Next up is sights and trigger control test on the spinner. That is our Titan Grid Outdoors 6 inch spinner target and we are back about uh, 13 yards or so. Tia's got 10 rounds of PMC bronze. The intent of this is it's a sights and trigger control test for us and the gun. How well can we learn the gun? As you hit the steel, it starts moving. The more you hit it, the faster it moves, the harder it is to hit, the more important a good sight picture and timed shot becomes. And it's fun. Right. Hitting high. Pretty good hits. I think out of 10, you hit eight? Really high though, which confuses me because they were high. Like I was shooting high, though I was aiming low. And I think it's because that's my first time shooting a spinner with a 45. <laughs> so it's spinning a lot faster and anticipating that recoil like Graham is implying yes I was probably healing a little bit did nothing to help my wrist um, <laughs> <laughs> it's a very learnable system we have a few environmental um what's the word <laughs> like that sun <laughs> yeah. coming down right in our Factors eyes <laughs> playing into trying to just learn the sights the trigger trigger control and all of that um and as I'm standing here, I'm noticing a, a really nice rainbow pattern coming through on the front. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, let's see how Graham does. Well, I think Tia did really well. Anticipating, of course, that that, that happens, you get excited, but um, she timed her shots just about perfectly. which is not always easy to do. Now I kind of lucked out in that the target quit on me there. And it's a heavy round. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's a heavy round that's definitely putting some, some impact on the steel. As you can see, those of you that have watched the channel for a while know that with nine mil, we usually don't, don't get that much movement from hits uh, so easily, which is kind of cool. The sight was really hard to see with that sun coming down in our face and the breeze blowing the smoke back over the front of the gun as you shoot so that made it uh, a little bit tougher than normal however as a sight and trigger system as we've demonstrated in close to 70 other videos of grand power guns uh excellent excellent crisp trigger that's very easy to time uh the front sight i'm not a huge fan of i'd probably swap it out if we're going to be using this much more or just decide not to shoot on days in the winter in the morning when the sun is coming right at the angle that i need to see those front sights so for accuracy we're using the nozzler match grade this is a 230 grain jacketed hollow point very handsome looking 
round and I'll be shooting at the left circle square. And this is five shots from seven yards. That square is one inch. We use this because that's typically about the same size as the front sight post. God dang, that's sharp. Yeah, I saw that bullet fly in the sun. saw that one too. However, a very um, predictable recoil in that it's rising and coming right back where it needs to be. Not a, not a great group, but they're all in there. Not bad at all. <laughs> Five shots from seven yards with the Nosler 230 grain match on the right circle square. Almost. There we go. Ouch. This is spicy ammo. Damn. The recoil is not painful. It's just causing a lot of muzzle flip. It's causing really good ejection too. Has it hitting you? Twice. Sorry about that. Jesus. Thunderous, That's why we too. wear hats. <laughs> <clears throat> so my first time back with a 45 in a couple of years, maybe more, um, was a Grand Power, and I'm grateful for that. It made shooting those larger rounds a lot more pleasant than I think they would have been out of another platform. Um, as far as my overall takes on the gun, it's it fits my hand well or it fits my hand very traditionally and which is what I'm accustomed to and I'm able to get in and get a good grip. Um, the trigger is a grand power trigger. Maybe not as um, excited as some other grand power triggers that I've shot. I noticed when I was doing the accuracy portion that I was able to time my recoil and trigger very well and that probably has something to do with the fact that I had just come off of the spinner test and so I was paying more attention to that. Um, like I said, it wasn't a great accuracy group, but there's a lot of different environmental factors going into that. Um, overall, I, I'm impressed. It's always a grand power that does that. I have to agree with Tia on the trigger comment. This trigger is not as fluid. Fluid, yeah, that's a great way of saying it. As as a lot of the other grand powers that we've had, this had a little bit of a more, little more defined of a wall. I kind of wish we had that on the 10 mil <laughs> and used the light one from the 10 mil on this. Um, I'm a, an unabashed grand power fanboy i've enjoyed them for seven years now uh, and reviewed this is now the 20th model that we've been through the sights could use an update um, front sight is a cz 75 cut so there is an option for that for sure with the 45 as you saw on the tabletop you get a different grip module than you do with the 9 mil models so there aren't interchangeable back straps and the texturing is a little bit different this texturing is a little more aggressive and I find it works better. My hand fit isn't as good on this shape as it is on the traditional 9mm size, but it's a bigger round, it's a fatter magazine, they have to build a gun around that. So it's just something that you give up, um, or compromise you make if you will. Recoil was smooth as ever. Uh, some of these rounds were downright delightful to shoot despite the nearly half inch size of projectile you're throwing out there and when people think 45 a lot of folks think of it being a powerful round it can be if it's got the right barrel size which is why we went with the p45l the longer barrel 45 really needs its speed to do its damage um, and this size barrel this size gun is just appropriate and it's while i would call it full size i don't think it necessarily be too big to carry uh, especially since the stock, the part that has to be concealed, is roughly the same size as it is on the K100 that I've been carrying for years. I just got a lot of barrel out there. Overall, it's it's a nice option for those who want to shoot 45 and still have a smoother experience uh, and something other than a 1911 with 10 rounds of capacity.
Thanks for watching.